Hello, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another iceberg video, and in today's episode we are going over the legendary creature iceberg again, and this will be part 2 of 3. If you missed my last video, I have a discord now, so link is in the description, and also my twitter if you want to keep updated with videos. And also, just before we started, uh, a big thanks to this person right here who managed to translate some of the, the blurs on the iceberg, so thank you to them. But without further ado, let's get into the video. With the ones that I missed, first we have the Mothman. And in West Virginian folklore, the Mothman is a creature reportedly seen at the Point Pleasant area from November 15th, 1966 to December 15th, 1967. The first newspaper reported was published in the Point Pleasant Register dated November 16th, 1966, and it was titled Couple Sees Man-Sized Bird, Creature, Something. Next we have the Phylacene, I believe it's pronounced, and this is an extinct carnivorous that was native to the Australian mainland and the islands of Tamizia and New Guinea. It was the longest known carnivore in the world prior to its extinction, evolving about 2 million years ago. The last known live animal was captured in 1930 in Tamizia. And that is all of the ones which I missed, and the Dogman is on a later tier, so I don't think that it was in the, in the one that I missed. Okay, and kicking off tier 4, we have the Mongolian Deathworm, and the Mongolian Deathworm is a creature allegedly that existed in the Gobi Desert. The creature first came to Western attention as a result of Roy Chapman Andrews' 1927 book on the Trail of Ancient Men. I thought this one was pretty cool, and it reminded me of Tremors, if you've ever seen that film. Now that I think of it, that film was probably based off of this, like, folklore. And next we have the Sea Serpent, and the Sea Serpent, or Sea Dragon, is a type of dragon sea monster described in various mythologies, most notably Mesopotamian, Hebrew, Greek, and Norse. Again, this is another cool one, and I'm pretty sure that they've been in, like, you know, like, countless films and things. But yeah, still, you know, on the lesser known ones, but once we get down the, the list, some of these are, like, really cool. Next we have the Beast of Gevedon, I believe. Gevedon? Yeah. In, is the historical name associated with a man-eating animal or animals which terrorized the former province of Gévaudan. This was in the mountains of central France between 1764 and 1767. This next one is quite funny, it's called the, the Ahul. And the Ahul is a winged cryptid, some portrayed the creature as a giant bat, while others claim it is a flying primate. And the name Ahul comes from its loud, distinct cry, which is obviously Ahul, that's what it sounds like, so I thought that one was pretty funny. Next we have the, the Tatzilworm. Tatzilworm. And in Alpine folklore, the Tatzilworm uh, is a lizard-like creature, often described as having the face of a cat with a serpent-like body, which may be slender or stubby, with four short legs or two forelegs. This is a really weird one, and... Tazzleworm, I think that's how you pronounce it, <laughs> not quite sure. Next we have the Dobha Chu, Dobha Chu, and this is King Otter, another word for it is, and it is a creature of Irish folklore, and it resembles both a dog and an otter, though it sometimes is described as a half dog, half fish, it lives in water, and has fur with protective properties. One thing which I really like to think about with all these is how, like, realistic some of them sound. So, like, it literally could have been, like, a, a creature that's, like, gone extinct or whatever. That's, we just haven't found anything yet, which I, I would like to believe in. I'd like to believe there's, like, another species of something that we haven't found yet. But, uh, unless it's scary, I don't want it to be scary and, like, kill us all. That's the, that's the only exception. Next we have the Drop Bear, and the Drop Bear um, is assigned the fictional scientific name Phyracos Plumatus is a hoax in Australian folklore featuring a predatory carnivorous version of the koala. This imaginary animal is commonly spoken about in tales designed to scare tourists. While koalas are typically docile herbivores, Drop Bears are described as unusually large and vicious. They inhibit treetops and attack unsuspecting people that walk beneath them by dropping onto their heads from above. When I was researching this, it reminded me of uh, the whole like wet koala thing. You know, if you haven't seen it, just like look up wet koalas and go on images. They're like actually terrifying. 
Next we have the Bunyip, and the Bunyip is a creature, again from Australian mythology, said to lurk in swamps, billagongs, creeks, riverbeds, and waterholes. The bunny yip was part of traditional beliefs and stories throughout Australia, while its name varied according to the tribe. And next we have another one which, oh, I can't pronounce this. Aspin Dojlong. Aspin Dolong. Um, yep, that's, that's as good as it's going to get. According to the tradition of medieval bestiarities, the... Aspon, oh, I'm just going to give up, um, is a fabled sea creature, variously described as a large whale or a vast sea turtle, and a giant sea monster with huge spines on its back, and no matter what form it is, it always described as being huge, and it is also mistaken for an island, and appears to be rocky, with crevices and valleys and trees, and so it's basically just like a swimming island, you know, that would be cool, but yeah, I um, definitely butchered that name, so um, don't, don't bully me in the comments. Next we have the Yativo, and the Yativo is a famous carnivorous tree found in South America. Basically, it's a tree which eats you. Apparently it's only for insects, but, you know, like, because of the famous creature, it, it kills humans too, apparently. That's the, that's the legend. And after that is the Malagascan man-eating tree, and I'm pretty sure that that's just the same thing, but, you know, it's in Madagascar, and it eats people. But yeah, uh, the man-eating trees, what they remind me of is that uh, that one map from Mortal Kombat and also in Mortal Kombat 9, you know, the the, the woods one. Um, y people know the one I'm on about and you can, like, uh, one of the stagealities, is it? Uh, you can, like, feed him to the tree. Yeah, um, that was cool. <laughs> and that is the end of Tier 4. Okay, so now, starting on Tier 5, first we have the Skunk Ape. And the skunk ape is a folkloric ape-like creature um, who was apparently inhibiting the forests and swamps of some southern US states, most commonly in Florida. It is named for its weird appearance and its unpleasant odour. Next we have Bigfoot variations, and I couldn't really find much on this, but I just assume that it means like more monkeys like Bigfoot. <laughs> I always thought that, like, the Abominable Snowman, or, like, a Yeti, was, like, Snow Bigfoot, so I'm guessing it's, like, referring to things like that, you know, like, Jungle Bigfoot, or whatever. But if you know anything, let me know in the comments below. Next, we have the Charles Mills Lake Monster. And in 1959, three young men from Ohio claimed to have had a face-to-face -face encounter with one of the most bizarre critters ever to emerge from a seaweed-strewn lake bed. An encounter so brief that even the most cryptologists don't know what to make of it. I've showed a picture on screen on what it looks like, and there is more, but I couldn't really find that much. So, um, if you want to know more about this one, definitely do your own research, because the whole thing is very, very bizarre. Next we have the Frenzo Nightcrawler, and the Frenzo Nightcrawler, also known as the Frenzo Alien, is a cryptid that has made two appearances so far, in Frenzo, California, and the other in Yosemite National Park, also in California. In both sightings, it is only video footage. However, a man in Poland has claimed to have seen the creature. It is said to resemble the Carmel Area creature. Next, we have the Love <laughs> Loveland Frogman. And this is definitely my favourite one in this video, just because of how it looks. And in Ohio folklore, the Loveland Frog, also known as the Loveland Frogman or Loveland Lizard, is a legendary human-eyed frog described as standing roughly four foot tall. Allegedly spotted in Loveland, Ohio in 1972, the Loveland f frog legend gained renewed attention when a Loveland police officer reported to a colleague that he had seen an animal consistent with the descriptions of the frogman, and after a sighting in 2016, the second officer has called the news station to report that he had shot and killed the same creature, some weeks after the 1972 incident, it has been identified as a large iguana that was missing its tail, and it was not a frogman. Next we have Orange Eyes, and Orange Eyes is a Sasquatch that has been sighted a long time ago. Orange Eyes lived under a Cleveland cemetery. He lives near Mill Lake, which is also home to the Charles Mill Lake monster. Next, we got Dogman, and when I was younger, this one, I don't know why, but it scared me the most. Just like the idea of like a massive, like, and werewolves. I used to think they were real, but yeah, massive dogs, um, they scared me. 
basically this this dog man was allegedly witnessed in nine in eighteen sorry eighteen eighty seven in Westford County, Michigan. The creature is described as a seven foot tall blue eyed or amber eyed <laughs> i'm I'm lost for words because of like this is like bringing back memories of how scared I was of it. So just imagine like a seven foot like werewolf or whatever. And yeah, I used to be scared of uh, American Werewolf in London as well. That was like another film which uh, kept me up at night. But yeah, uh, these dog men or a dog man, they've had several different sightings and most of them, they all fit around the same description, but uh, no real or allegedly real photographic evidence has ever come to light. Obviously, there are a few photos which are apparently them, but I uh, don't know if they're real or not, obviously. And next we have mermaids. And I'm pretty sure everyone knows what a mermaid is here. It's just, you know, half fish, half human. You know, my little mermaid. Um, these, I don't know why, but they scare me. Because I think that they would be, like, tiny. Like the, the photo which I've shown. That's what I think mermaids would look like. I don't think they would be, like, beautiful. Um, I think a mermaid would be small. And I think a siren would be what people think a mermaid was. And then they'll just die because they're sirens, obviously. And now we are going on to tier 6, starting off with the Black Shark. And this is an English cryptid, and it is said to be sort of like a, a black dog sort of thing. And it is said to roam across the British Isles, and it has been seen apparently in Norfolk, Suffolk, Cambridgeshire, Fens and Essex as well. Personally, I have never seen this, so um, I can't confirm it to you. Next we have the the white wheelia wa whale and similar to the white wolf and often considered to be the same animal the wahila or saber wolf is a large wolf like creature said to inhibit Alaska and the Northwest territories it is a larger and more heavily built than normal wolves basically uh the shock and this one they're like opposites you know big black dog big white dog just think of it that way Next we have the Thunderbird, and this is just a bird of thunder, and if you ever played Dark Souls 3, uh, you know the, what's his name? Nameless King, you know his, his bird. I, I can't think what it's called for the life of me, I can't think off the top of my head, uh, but yeah, it's, it's one of them. And just like in Dark Souls 3, they are considered to be very powerful. The amount of times I've died to that boss, oh my god. <laughs> Next we have skinwalkers, and in Navijo culture, a skinwalker is a type of harmful witch who has the ability to turn into, possess, or disguise themselves as an animal. The term is never used for healers. So this is just like a, a shapeshifter sort of thing then. And that would definitely be like one of the powers which I would want the most, you know, to shapeshift. I think that would be quite cool. I could just like turn myself into a cat and like climb, climb shit. That's just my opinion though. <laughs> Next we have the Knuckle Leave, and the Knuckle Leave is a horse-like demon uh, from Oridian mythology that combines the equine and human elements. This is one of the really cool ones. It has origins in North mythology and British folklorist Catherine Briggs called it the nastiest of all the demons. Next we have the Wendigo, and this is a mytholi- Oh my god, the amount of times I've done this take because I can't say- myth Mythological. Myth oh, I give up, I give up. Um, it's a creature or evil spirit which originates from the folklore of First Nations believed in and around the East Coast forests of Canada. Oh, I'm still mad, I couldn't say that. Anyway, next we have the Kelpie, and the Kelpie is a shape-changing aquatic spirit of Scottish legend. Its name may derive from the Scottish Gaelic word capi peach or colpatch, meaning hair for or colt. Kepleys are said to haunt rivers and streams, usually in the shape of a horse. This is, again, one of the really cool ones which I was on about, because it was like a like a snake horse, which is just really weird, because it's like two animals which you would never like put together. And lastly, we have a hellhound. And if you've ever played COD Zombies, you know what a hellhound is. Basically just like demon dogs that like chase you down. Uh, that's, that's, that's what I remember them as. And apparently it's not that far off when I did the research. It is literally just like an evil spirit possessed like a dog or whatever. But yeah, um, if you ever played COD Zombies, you, you know what these are. Anyway, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And next video will be the last one on this series. So yeah, as I said, Discord and Twitter both in the description. But apart from that, I hope you enjoyed and hopefully I will see you in the next video.